Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. Check out this knife. Didn't I just show you this knife, what, two videos ago? When I did my best of 2018 budget knives video? Yes, I did. And guess what? <laughs> I got this knife in January of 2018. And for the last 10 months, I thought that I had done the review on this knife and I had never even done the review for this knife. I've just been carrying it a lot. It's been the my most fun knife. There's a lot, there's a lot of knives that came very, very close. Uh, but this is the knife that I said was the best knife of 2017, 2018, sorry, <laughs> uh, as far as budget knives go. And uh, it's a knife that's under 40 US dollars. And it's a beautiful knife, and I can't believe I didn't review it. So stick around for my late but <laughs> complete review of the Rake P105 Fang. It comes in two colors. This is the P105-K, black and light blue, and it comes in the P105-Q, which is the black and bright blue. So you get your choice if you want to be flamboyant, or slightly subdued when you get yours. I'll have links down below to make it easy for you to get your own. Thank you very much to uh, Rake Canada for sending this to me. Uh, I did have to pay a price for it, but uh, thank you for uh, sending this to me, Rake, and I do appreciate it tremendously. And uh, like I said, this is the top knife for 2018, so get ready to be impressed. Stick around. So this is what the, this knife looks like after one year of carry. Now, of course, I had a whole lot of other knives that I carried. So it's not like uh, a regular, you know, knife enthusiast who likes budget knives, who gets maybe five, ten knives a year. You know, if he carried a knife all year or she, it would have more wear than this simply because, you know, less knives in the circulation. And I carry a whole lot of different knives. It's just that when I go out and I'm not reviewing something or I just, you know, don't want to carry the knife that I'm reviewing that time, I tend to grab this one. <clears throat> you can see ever so slightly a little bit of wear on the pocket clip. So there's the pocket clip. Very beautiful. I like that extra anodized uh, steel piece right in there. And you can see, you know, it's rubbed off a little bit on there. A little bit of wear on that pocket clip. I love this pocket clip. Nice deep carry. You've got like a little over an eighth of an inch, not quite a quarter of an inch sticking out, half a centimeter maybe sticking out of your pocket when you're wearing this knife in your, when you're wearing, when you have this knife in your pants. Uh, you can see the rake name on the pocket clip right there. I'm trying to keep this in focus. It's not that, not the easiest thing to do right here. We've got a big backspacer all the way from this transition point where your thumb rest is back up. Let's refocus this. So you got that nice big area here for the uh, backspacer. There's some skeletonizing in here. I'll show you some pictures of the inside of the knife. Okay, I'm doing this part in video this time instead of just still pictures. So you see the skeletonizing, there's a good amount of that. Maybe a little bit more as possible. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Here's that big backspacer. And this is why I like these so much. You know, just one swipe through the middle of that and it's nice and clean instead of, well, I mentioned that before. I'm not going to go ad nauseum on that. Uh, pocket clip screws right there. So there you are. Uh, lock bar arm, a stainless steel ball bearing for the detent. And there's the uh, ball bearings. I actually should put them down there because we're focused down there. I'll give you a close-up picture of those. And there's the uh, there's the D-shaped hole so that the pivot screw with its uh, flat section right there, you know, it goes in there and locks. And that's what keeps it from spinning freely because once that's in place, let me put it in there like that. So once it's in there, you know, it can't spin. And that's a really good thing. I like that technology. It's so simple, so easy to do. 
every folding knife should have that. That's my opinion. Here's the beautiful blade. Uh, there's a hole in here for some reason. It must be for manufacturing because it doesn't do anything else right there. There's the pivot hole and there's the detent hole. Uh, it's probably for indexing for when they manufacture it. And, uh, you know, sharp edge and everything. And here's the uh, stop pin. And yes, I did measure it. 3.9 millimeters. That's 0.15 something inches. So nice heavy duty pin. And what's this? What's that about? That goes on, but my fingers are just too chubby. <laughs> There's the uh, screw for the pivot. That goes on right there between the screw. And then you put it on the body there and you screw it together. And that acts in place of Loctite. So instead of using Loctite, that soft, it creates resistance to unscrewing. So <laughs> that's really, really cool. It works really well and it's easy to use and it's certainly functional, but it doesn't make it difficult to open the knife back up and take it apart and do maintenance if you need to. So just little things like that on a low budget knife, stuff like that, you don't see this on $100 knives. You don't see it on $150 knives. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. But this is an awesome, but this is an awesome budget knife. Liner lock, lockup is wonderful. It's a very tiny bit later than I prefer a uh, knife to be, but it's no longer brand new. <laughs> It was a slight bit earlier when I first got it, if I remember correctly. Uh, but lockup is solid. There's no blade play side to side, up and down. Uh, it locks easily. The action is smooth. Uh, we've got a D-shaped pivot pin, so it's not free spinning. So torque screw here and two torque screws on the back here to take the knife apart. And um, a little bit of jimping on the lock bar arm. And the lock bar arm is easy to get at. So it's very easy to unlock this knife to go to close it. And it's very easy to deploy this blade. It works very, very well. The uh, thumb flipper, uh, actually finger flipper, it's not a thumb flipper. It's actually got a tiny little bit of a radius in on this side. And, you know, it's excellent for the light switch method. You just pull back and it flies. But it's also working very great for just pushing down and ever so slightly back the push button method to light that, uh, to, to open that knife. Now, somebody was telling me about the BIC method of opening knives. Just yesterday I was reading it. Yeah, you can do that with this one too. <laughs> That's why I was thinking thumb. Uh, you wrap a couple fingers around the pocket clip and you, <laughs> you flick your BIC with your knife. These ball bearings, very smooth action, uh, very good. You know, they're not perfect, but this is a budget knife. And you know, just a slight shake and it gets closed. Easy to open, easy to close. Uh, lanyard hole, there's a little bit of a relief cut on the side of the G10. You can tell because it's not all black to the end there. So I like it when the hole is in just a little bit. So if you do use paracord, it doesn't bulk out as much. So that's kind of nice. Uh, you do only have the one side for the pocket clip, right side only. I don't remember if I mentioned that before. And then you've got the G10. Now it comes in two colors, like I said, and this is the K version. So it's the uh, subdued blue. It's the light blue. And I like it very, very much because it's it's uh, it stands out a bit, but it's not in your face. But... I bet you if I had the bright blue one, I'd talk about how, you know, flamboyant it is in a good way because I really do like bright colors as well. I like colors. I like shapes. I like the artisticness of things. And this thing's got a really good, you know, sculptural kind of feel to it. It's got a really good look and the way they've made it, it's very, very comfortable. Uh, back grip or reverse grip. You've got a slightly flat spot there to put your thumb. So that works very, very well. Uh, 
because you got this big, high, flat grind, full flat grind, pinch grip works very, very well. Your regular saber grip is great. Fist grip, you know, no matter how you want to hold this, it is comfortable. And that's one of the reasons why I picked it as the best knife for 2018 in the budget category. Now let's talk about this blade shape. We've got satin. Uh, oh, there's some oil on my fingers leaving a little bit of residue, but it's a satin ground and it's got the lines going down across. We've got a swedge at the top here. Rake calls this a spear point. Some people might want to call it a drop point, but it is very much a spear point. It's not exactly identical from the cutting edge and the spine, like the, the radius of this line here, but very, very close. Um, the steel here is a good thickness big thick stop pin you know it's a great knife let's show you what the pocket clip looks like and then we'll do the measurements <laughs> well i showed you what the pocket clip looks like what i mean is let's show you what it looks like going into a pocket there you go and sometimes it catches ever so slightly on those screws but there's a lot of space there so usually it goes in just fine so it almost looks like i might have a pen in my pocket this pocket clip doesn't scream out he's got a knife it you know it's gentlemanly if you will of course the knife isn't a gentleman's knife not by any stretch but you know the pocket clip i really really like it's very functional and it looks good and you know that's the two things you look for function and appeal in the looks so that's a really good thing You've got a fair bit of space right here between the head of those screws and the body, back of the pocket clip there. But since they do stick up a bit, that's why the pants sometimes catch on there a little bit. So I would have liked different screws in here, uh, maybe uh, flat head screws so that they would recess in. But that's a perennial complaint with um, deep carry pocket clips. You know, you get the screws like this and the pants tend to catch on there. So let's do all the measurements now, like I said we would. We've got the cutting edge and the blade length are identical. 9.2 centimeters, 3.62 inches. And by the way, Rake is one of the few companies where their measurements are correct. The measurements you find on their website are exactly what you get in the knife. Almost every company, you know, you've got a fudge factor of at least 5%. These guys, their fudge factor is less than 1%. They're just very accurate with their measurements. And they even got a sheet giving you the measurements. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. So there you go. That's the, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the cutting edge. Uh, the blade thickness, uh, they say it's 3.5 millimeters. I measured 3.4 with my uh, Minotoyo Vernier calipers, which is a really high-end caliper. Uh, 3.4 millimeters is 0.134 inches and eighth of an inch is 0.125. So I've seen some reviewers say that this is less than an eighth. No, it's more than an eighth of an inch thick because an eighth is 125. This is 0.134. So that's really good. So big chunk of steel. We've got the blade depth. So from the spine to the cutting edge at the biggest spot here, 3.18 centimeters, 1.25 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, I didn't get a factory measurement. I've sharpened this thing a couple times, so it's slightly thicker than it was from the factory. I've got right now 0.46 millimeters, which is 0 0.018 inches, so 18 thousandths of an inch, nice and thin behind the grind, and a full flat blade that's this wide makes it a most excellent slicing machine. Uh, the grind angle, I don't know what the grind angle was from the factory because, like I said, I've sharpened the knife already. I don't remember having to reprofile it really or change the angles or anything, at least not much. And most rake knives are very close to what they should be. So I can just remember that it was a pretty good factory grind. I remember it being very sharp from the factory, but the actual grind angle numbers I never got. Now to talk about the handle. Uh, the handle length is 12.16 centimeters, which is 4.79 inches. The grip area in here is right around 10 centimeters, 4 inches, you know, roughly. It's hard to give an exact number for the grip area. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 0.152 centimeters. That's 0.6 of an inch. So not bad. It's a good full-size 
knife. The handle depth, that's this measurement here. 2.85 centimeters, that's 1.12 inches. And then with the knife closed, being this big full flat grind, it's a bit larger this way, 3.8 centimeters, 1.5 inches, which isn't big by any stretch. Well, okay, maybe it's big, but it's not excessive is what I mean. The total length of this knife with the blade deployed is 21.3 centimeters, which is 8.39 inches. So a little bit under eight and a half inches for a knife blade that is just, you know, a little bit over three and a half inches. So that's not bad at all. Uh, the balance point is, uh, it's, there we go. The balance point is right there, pretty much exactly where I want it to be on this kind of knife. Very, very comfortable in hand. How much are you going to, oh, how much does this weigh? I didn't put that on here. 147 grams, exactly what they said it weighs on their website. Uh, my scale says that is 5.2 ounces. Uh, that's because uh, at the second decimal point, my scale rounds to the nearest five. So uh, it's really 5.19. My scale says 5.2 ounces. So just over five ounces. So could they have made it lighter? Yes, they could have skeletonized it a little bit more. But hey, it's not heavy at all. I don't find it excessive. And for this size knife, it's easy to carry and wonderful, wonderful knife. How much are you going to pay for this? Uh, Rake Knives Canada sells it for $53.95 Canadian. That's right around $39 US dollars. Uh, Rake Canada ships to North America. So to Canada or United States, if you spend $100, they will ship it to you for free in both countries. So if you're outside of North America, I'll have some Amazon links down below that you can get it from. But if you're in North America, Please support the company that supported me by sending this to me at a discount. And that is Rake Canada, rakeknives.ca. And uh, send your support that way. I, I'm sorry, I don't have a coupon code for you or anything. But if you can, let them know that Jake from Canadian Cutting Edge sent you. Uh, Rake has a great warranty. They've got a five-year warranty, parts and labor, and then a lifetime warranty on labor. You just pay for the parts. So that's really, really good. Everything that's, everything's covered on that except for, you know, abuse. So don't abuse your knives. Um, there is one point of weakness on this knife. It, it's all pros for me. The one point, well, it's not really a point of weakness. The one potential point is, and like I always say, never use your knives to pry with. And especially this kind of tip because it's so narrow and comes thin there, this tip, you know, you will break the tip off if you start prying with it. It's almost guaranteed. And that's not a fault at all of the blade or the steel or anything. It's just, you know, a piece of steel with this shape is going to break off if you pry with it. So uh, don't use your knives that way. <laughs> uh, by the way, this video is in 720p. And uh, that's because I have a borrowed camera. My camera was stolen. Well, I use a camera that's on a cell phone and it was stolen. And so I've ordered a new one. Thanks to all my supporters who helped me get that ordered. It's going to take a while to get here because it's coming from China. But uh, so my video quality right now isn't the greatest. And I've noticed it sometimes goes light and dark and light and dark. I just move my hand and the camera changes lighter and darker on the video resolution. You know, it's the best I've got right now. So unfortunately, my videos aren't going to be the greatest until I get my new camera again, my new cell phone. Uh, what are the rest of the pros? Well, like I said, the pivot's great, great action, smooth, solid. Lockup is awesome, but it's a nice big stop pin. You get that solid whack when you open the knife. Um, excellent slicer. This knife is great for cutting just about anything. Great for piercing anything. Uh, I mean, you could skin animals with this, no problem. Uh, very, very nice. You could use this for meal prep, especially if you go camping, you want a knife for in the camp kitchen. This thing's going to do you very, very well. Um, so there you go. That's the main things I want to say about this knife. 14C28N, I didn't mention that before. It's an awesome budget steel at 39 US dollars. 14C28N is a very good deal. Rockwell on this is around 59, you know, 58 to 60. And uh, that's a really good 
hard steel that's very durable. You don't have to sharpen it that often. I've only sharpened it once this whole year. You know, like I said, I don't carry it as much as a guy who makes this his main knife, but I've carried it quite a lot and used it quite a lot. And, you know, I really, really like this knife. I can't recommend it enough. And I certainly can't recommend it too much. Uh, <laughs> just different ways we use English phrases. It's kind of weird, isn't it? So if you're looking for a knife to give yourself a treat or to get for somebody else, yeah, it's too late for Christmas, but it's never too late to get a gift for yourself or for somebody else. I would like you to consider, you know, the entire Rake lineup, but especially the Rake P105 Fang. Yes, it's called the Fang. This thing will cut through you like nobody's business. And just before I close off this video, I want to remind you, please fill out my survey. It's one question long. It takes you five seconds to fill out. It's completely anonymous. The question basically is, is what amount of money in U.S. dollars do you consider, you know, the limit for a budget knife? You know, is it $50? Is it $60? Is it $20? You know, what number, when you say, I like budget knives because they cost no more than beep dollars. What's the beep? How, usually we beep out swears, but what's the number? And uh, there's a link down below and I've got it in the pinned comments for you. Hopefully I've got it in the pinned comments so that you can find that link to fill out that survey. The more responses I get, but please only fill it out once. The more responses I get, the better feeling I can get for what the viewers of my channel think is a budget knife. And that will help me in 2019 because I'll be targeting predominantly budget knives for this channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Isn't that a beautiful knife? Bye for now.